Welcome to the AXIS CME presentation, Kleinfelder Syndrome, Identifying, Characterizing, and Managing an Underdiagnosed Condition with Serious Consequences. My name is Gary Glissman. I am the past board chairperson for AXIS, which is the Association for X and Y Variations. I am also a registered nurse and chief operating officer for the Urology Cancer Center and GU Research Network, and have a 35-year-old adult son with Kleinfelder Syndrome. I will be presenting Lesson 1, The History, Prevalence, Phenotype, and Etiology of Kleinfelder Syndrome. Today we know KS is the most common chromosome disorder affecting 1 in 600 male births. There is no proven ethnic impact. It equally affects all races and nationalities. We also know that a large percentage may never be diagnosed as many as 60 to 75 percent will go undetected, leading to significant mistreatments for tens of thousands of individuals. Etiology and phenotypic expression. KS is caused by non-disjunction during cell division. This is a very important point for providers to understand since many families and KS individuals are extremely anxious that KS is an inherited condition. They need reassurance it is a random situation that happens during meiosis and research has shown it takes place almost equally on the paternal or maternal side. There is very little chance that families would have a second KS child or that the KS individual would father a KS child. There will be more information on this covered in the fertility section. Etiology and phenotypic expression. The etiology of a wide variety of clinical features and phenotypic severity are not well understood. Possible genetic mechanisms that have been suggested include paternal origin of the supernumerary X chromosome, skewed inactivation of the X chromosomes, androgen receptor CAG repeat length, overexpression of genes located on the extra X chromosome, differential expression or non-coding RNA expression, DNA methylation alterations of the genome, and differential protein-to-protein -protein interaction. However, again, research is not conclusive for any of these potential genetic mechanisms. To date, researchers have only made a strong connection between the shox gene and tall stature in individuals with KS. More studies are clearly needed and researchers are beginning to focus on changes in the epigenome and transcriptome. While phenotypical severity is not well understood, research in the past decade has shown that there can be an increased risk for significant medical comorbidities. These would include a twofold increased risk of cardio and cerebrovascular disease, four to six fold higher risk of type two diabetes, an eight fold increased risk of osteoporosis and osteopenia, and a four to eight fold increased risk of venous thrombosis. We also know that there is a higher reported percentage of adults that show psychological and behavioral issues such as depression, anxiety and autism spectrum disorders. Another note on the frequency of comorbidities, currently 60 to 75 percent of those with KS are never diagnosed. So we know that the frequencies of comorbidities that we are discussing today in this lesson are seen in ascertained individuals. Future studies may find that comorbid conditions occur at different rates once prenatal screening is more widespread and we come closer to identifying the total population of individuals with XXY. As mentioned earlier, when compared to peers without KS, adults with KS are more likely to be diagnosed with depression, anxiety, attention deficiency, hyperactivity disorder or ADHD, autism spectrum disorder, specific learning disorders, and schizophrenia. They also tend to have a lower socioeconomic status as evidenced by individuals with KS retiring on average 15 years earlier than their peers, more likely to live alone, and less than 10% achieve higher education. Along with quality of life issues, social issues such as feeling unloved and lacking a long-term relationship, struggles to maintain employment, feeling misunderstood, shame from feminized features and diagnosis, and struggles to fit in are also fairly common. They can be more at risk for becoming involved with dysfunctional behavior, such as drug and alcohol abuse to treat feelings of hopelessness and despair. A good question for providers to ask is how many individuals with KS might be in your practice? 
only 10% are diagnosed before adolescence, and 65% of that 10% were diagnosed prenatally. With the increasing use of non-invasive prenatal tests, we hopefully will see an increase in diagnosis, but just be aware, too many, today many with KS go undiagnosed or only their presenting symptoms such as autism, learning issues, or mental illness are identified without the underlying cause being ascertained. Those with KS are not always easy to identify because they do not fit one consistent pattern. People with KS may present with a variety of the following. Small firm testes, decreased testicular volume, little to no sperm production, gynecomastia, narrow shoulders, broad hips, decreased muscle mass, decreased facial hair, and perhaps slightly taller than average, flat feet, thrombotic events such as DVT, abnormal left ventricular function or chronotropic incompetence, lack, lack of major anomalies on physical exam, and certainly as mentioned earlier, depression, anxiety, autism spectrum, ADHD, tremors, and fatigue. That concludes this lesson one. Uh, please note in the reference section that many of these uh, papers can and, and papers in subsequent lessons may be found in the Axis Library at www.genetic.org. Thank you.